Wow. Um, so my story for me, I recently found out I have a uh, herpes simplex two or type two, and um, I, it's been a struggle for me. Um, my story, I was dating someone, and you know I was getting ready to go into the military, and you know I go through the process, I get the basic, and uh, I found out I had COVID. So I go to quarantine. And, you know, and while I'm in quarantine, they're not allowing us to go to doctors and things of that nature. We're having to visit the doctor over FaceTime on an iPad or some kind of tablet. Well, I have my first breakout in quarantine. And I didn't know what it was. You know, uh, I just thought, you know, it's just like, you know, bumps or whatever, they'll go away on its own. Well, I get a phone call. I get, I get the ability to have a phone call. And I was calling, and I called my girl at the time. And in that five minute conversation, she tells me she has herpes. And it scared the living daylight out of me. Um, I, I didn't know how to respond. I didn't know what to think. Um, so I let someone know, obviously, I let someone know. And we go to the doctor. Uh, there, there was a separate doctor that you that they they gave you um, in like a tent outside of the hospital, and you know I, I get the test, and you know a few days later they they call me back and they say, hey man, you have herpes. Um, so instantly I like for me I froze. You know, I'm I'm going through the, the the stressful environment of basic training, and then I'm going through the stressful environment of quarantine, and uh, and I have a girl home, a girlfriend at home, who who has contracted herpes because of my negligence. Um, I've, I have gotten tested before, and you know I've always been told, hey, you're fine, and you know as soon as I graduated basic, I, I called. My, my doctor from home, and I was like, hey, man, you know, the, the last test I took, man, you know, what's on it? And, you know, they told me there wasn't a herpes test on it. And, uh, you know, from watching uh, Santa, you know, I found out that they don't normally test for herpes. And, and, and me and that girl aren't together anymore. It was something we couldn't get over. Um, but, you know, yeah, that, that's, that's, that's my story. Now I'm, you know, dealing with having to uh tell tell someone when they speak to me or, or when they want to have you know maybe have sex with me that hey uh you know i i have herpes and, and that's a struggle for me right now wow king first of all thank you for sharing your story thank you for being brave enough to come up here and share your story you already doing something to heal yourself. You're already doing something for yourself to break the stigma because there's people out here that won't even show up for themselves in this way. So that's something to be proud of. Two, King, we, I'm an army vet. Amber's an Air Force vet. I heard you, ba you baby, you a baby baby soldier. What, what branch are you in, Eli? I'm in the US Army. I am a uh, 27 Delta specialist. If you don't know what that is, that's paralegal. Okay. I'm, I'm in the law. Oh, you know, nice. I, I keep people out of the army. I chapter them out, etc. Okay. Mm. I am ex MP and protective service. Um, yeah. So <laughs> we got military family veterans up here on stage, literally, and veterans in this herpes game. So Eli, thank you so much for sharing. Greatly appreciate your transparency. We got we global. We y'all when we say we global, we whole global. Period. Across the waters tapping in. So thank you for sharing, Eli. Um, so have you disclosed before to anyone since y'all's relationship, or have you been sexually active? Well, we all see we get all each other's business over here in Clubhouse. So whatever you feel comfortable sharing, I just be asking the questions. But oh, uh, you know, you know, when we in the military, it's just it, it's whatever. Um <laughs> it is. I haven't had any sexual intercourse. Um, you know, I, I recently got to Italy in the last like month. I've had some females come talk to me. You know, I, I like to think I'm an attractive male. You know, I've had females come talk to me, but I've been too fearful to let myself, hey, you know, 
tell them because I, I don't want my business out there like that, and then I don't I don't need that getting around. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, but when when I went to basic, when I got out of quarantine and went to my second unit, um, I did have friends. I had homeboys that I, I did be like, you know, hey man, you know, that I felt comfortable enough to talk to about it. And I, I guess that's what makes me be able to talk to talk about it now, but not with a female. You know, being able to have those private conversations with close friends and and them being new people, I don't feel comfortable telling them anything. <laughs> that makes total sense. Um, Shayna, what do you what do you have to say? What do you have to offer to Eli? Well, I'm happy you're here, King. This is the first step to getting comfortable with disclosure, getting comfortable with your herpes, learning how to accept your herpes. Herpes can never is a kind of different platform than you see out here in the herpes community. And we're for breaking the stigma. We're not here to show you or teach you how to live life through the stigma. We want you to break it for yourself. So number one is acceptance. Right now, you're not ready to date. You're not ready to have sex. You're not ready to put yourself out there because you're not even, you're not comfortable with your herpes yet, which is normal. That's normal for all of us. That was normal for me. That was normal for Amber. That's normal for a lot of people, but we're changing that narrative. I always tell people, if you haven't accepted your herpes, you're not ready to disclose. You're not ready to have sex because the type of energy you're putting out there is going to set you up for failure. The type of people you're going to attract are women or men, whatever your preference is, that are attracted to you loving yourself less. They can see, they can benefit off of, they can benefit off of the fact that you haven't accepted your herpes status and you will attract narcissists and manipulators. So we tell everybody within the community that you should take time to learn yourself learn your virus, get comfortable with your virus, accept the fact that your virus is going to be here for the long term, for the long time, learn your body, your your triggers, your prodrome symptoms, and just really get comfortable with your status. If you're new to our community, I highly suggest you join our private Facebook group. Um, It's packed with women, but we do have our fellas in there and our fellas, they are active in the group and they will support you in, I guess, the male way, the, the male support that you need that me and Amber can't necessarily provide. But we are here for you and we're going to help you break free of this stigma, Eli. So you can talk about your herpes freely so you can live life as you knew it before herpes. Again, King, we appreciate you. We welcome you. We love you. You are now a cousin. And thank you for sharing your story, Eli. Yes, Eli, thank you so much. Herpes could never. Ever. Welcome to the stage, Helena. Yes, Helena. Yes. Hi, everyone. Hey. How are you guys doing? Oh, wow. How are you, Queen? Uh, I'm going through a, I'm okay, but mm-hmm. uh, it's a little struggle right now because, okay. uh, well, I um, what you say to piggyback, piggyback off of what you said, Shana, mm-hmm. yeah, it's really important to learn about it, accept it, go through that process um, because for me, this is a bit of a... <laughs> transparency moment slash repenting slash uh testimony a little bit um but I found out I had herpes well I tested positive for the IgG antibody Mm -hmm. in other words I found out I had herpes in early 2019 um and I at that time was with one partner Mm -hmm. and it turned out that he had also We couldn't really find out who gave to who or anything like that. Um, But uh, because of other reasons, too, we kind of went our separate ways. It was something that's been that was going on a a six year on and off kind of thing anyway. But um, I had kept to myself after that um, that moment in my my life. And I didn't really go to seek support or educate myself about it. It was kind of just like, I kind of just wanted to forget about it. And that's not good. You know, obviously that's not good. Um, And the people that I had around me, it was just like, oh, don't worry about it. Like so many people's got it, you know, live your life, you know, 
kind of just pretty, which is, which is great, you know, encouragement and advice, but they didn't, they didn't experience what I was experiencing, obviously, because they didn't, they wasn't dealing with what I had. They didn't, you know, have to deal with that. So it was kind of just like, all right, let me just, you know, live my life and just, you know, get past it a bit. I could consider myself asymptomatic like Amber. I don't really get any uh, breakouts uh, that I could easily identify as one. But um, I, in that year, got pursued by somebody. And <laughs> what I mean by pursue is I wasn't expecting him to come around. And I think... Well, pretty much I had gotten involved with him and I was so afraid to tell him Mm -hmm. in the beginning. And I kind of, while I was with him, I kind of was forgetting. I was just enjoying the moment. But in the back of my head, I was thinking, okay, like, you know, this, I should tell him. But then I was worried about and scared about, you know, what he would say and do, especially since, Uh, you know, the moment had passed. And then I had kind of just stepped away. And in in fear of, I stepped away in fear of that Mm -hmm. and in fear of just him possibly being involved with other people too. And somehow we reconnected again and it was until just last Monday that I finally told him and I just felt so guilty and so (laughs) like a bad person which is what he called me a bad person and it's just I'm glad I did the right thing by finally saying something but it's just feel like I just really made a huge mistake and I'm no better than the people who, you know, pass things along. And that's how I feel. So, Thank you, Helena, for sharing. You, you don't even understand how brave you are because people not going to talk about not disclosing. So one, I'm someone who hasn't disclosed in the past. And um, when I'm talking to clients, I always say the fear of rejection from disclosure, from having to disclose is a lot less than the guilt and you sh- and the shame that comes from not disclosing. So I've been where you are, Helena. I know how you feel, Helena. I know the weight that you feel. And it's it's a shitty thing to do. Um, scum do that. And I was one of those scum, but it doesn't define you. It is not who you are. And instead of you traveling with the pain and the guilt of that, you can take the lesson that you receive from that and say, moving forward, that will not happen. I don't care how afraid I am to disclose my status. I refuse to create the narrative for myself where I'm feeling ashamed or where I'm spreading the virus or I'm not giving a person the option to decide whether or not they want herpes like I wasn't given. So one You shared your story, you accepted it, you've heard it. Now it's time to throw it away and change your narrative. And moving forward here on out, you will not be somebody who doesn't disclose. I appreciate you from sharing because a lot of us won't talk about it. A lot of people within the communities don't even, they won't discuss their herpes. They don't deal with their herpes. They'll block it out, kind of like you did, kind of like what I did the first two years. The one time I didn't disclose, um, I was an alcoholic. I was drinking alcohol all the time. And um, I told the guy that we need to get tested together before we have sex. And I told him this in a sober mind because I thought that that would be easier to disclose my herpes. I got tested. He got tested. He'll find out I have herpes then. Instead, we were hanging out. And guess what? We were drinking. You're drinking, you're hanging out, you're chilling, you're cuddling. One thing leads to the other. I wake up butt ass naked. We done had sex. I didn't disclose. And I continue continue to do it. So you're not the only person who hasn't disclosed, but don't 
let this keep this moment in your life keep you from freeing yourself from the stigma. Don't let this moment in your life define the woman that you are. Let it make you a better person. Learn from the experience. Again, Helena, thank you for your bravery and thank you for sharing. Amber? Thank you so much, Helena, Helena for sharing that. Thank you, Shana, for also your transparency. And I love what you said. So the takeaway is don't let this moment define you. Ex understand it, learn from it, realize that you're not alone and realize that part of the stigma is also associated with the shame and not disclosing because so many people go through not disclosing. I myself never went through not disclosing, but I kind of went the opposite way. It was almost like I wasn't having sex with anybody or let anybody touch me. Like it, it was almost a year before I had sex after I got diagnosed because I couldn't even bring my mouth to tell a person that I had it and I just felt disconnected and just not attractive sexually. I just didn't see how I was going to be able to put myself in a situation to have sex. And now that I have herpes. So it's all a learning experience. It's a personalized experience. We all have so many similarities with having this virus, but it each affects us differently. And until the stigma is broken in your life, um, you're going to you know, struggle in areas like guilt, like shame, like feeling the ways that, you know, we've all felt we can all relate to. So um, I honor you. I know Shana does. Thank you for being here, showing up, and hope that today has provided you with some comfort and some relief and some support, because that's what we want to be here for you. So thank you, Helena. Key, welcome to the stage, Queen. Thank you. Hi, guys. Um, I just wanted to say, um, as far as disclosure and the stigma, uh, can you guys hear me? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because my connection is a little crappy. Um, I was on Instagram the other day, and they was talking, you know how people honor and worship Beyonce, and it was something about Amari, the guy who played Ghost on uh, Power, kissing her, and somebody commented, like, uh, he, he could have gave the queen herpes. And I then commented, okay, 80% of the world has it. This girl <laughs> responded, but she could be the 20% that doesn't. I'm like, how do you know that? Y'all worship so many people, but at the end of the day, so many for so many people to have this virus in the world, why is it so stigmatized? Like, I don't know if I'm bothered by that, but it's kind of annoying. You would think that so many people could relate because so many people carry it. But people always have something bad to say about it. It's stigmatized because there's no one talks about it. It's taboo. A lot of the people that's talking shit probably got herpes and probably told mm -hmm. somebody they didn't have herpes in a way to deflect. They act yep. like they don't. That's one. Two, the information's out, not out there. So people come up with information in their head about herpes and run with it. Um, ignorance ignorance and big money can be made off of ignorance so that's another reason why herpes is highly stigmatized amber all facts um ignorance is bliss and nobody not too many people want to live in the reality of talking about something like something uh like herpes that is so stigmatized because in the in the reality of it if a majority of the population has it then again we're in the majority so there there shouldn't be a stigma and so we break the stigma by talking about it by being vocal by being unapologetic in our approach and the fact that herpes could never and herpes like herpes doesn't define me and just living and continuing to love yourself and appreciate yourself and value yourself in that way will break the stigma because people will see that oh this person's herpes positive, but they could literally care less about what society is saying about them. There's something there. Maybe the stigma is really just, is the worst part, which it, it really truly is. So ignorance is bliss. And that's what a lot of people want to say. I'm trying to wake up. I'm woke. And, and another thing uh, about that is 85% of people with herpes don't even know they have herpes. That's one. Two, nobody knows it's not included in the STI panel. That's two. Three, doctors simply don't want to test for herpes if you're not having an outbreak. And there's a very small percentage of people within the herpes community that actually get outbreaks. The stigma is an illusion. 
The stigma is an illusion that we place on ourselves. Stigma within itself is validation. If you seek validation, I promise you the stigma will take over your life. But if you don't give a damn what people got to say or think or feel about you, the stigma is non-existent. Yes, you still have to deal with ignorant people. But with or without herpes, guess what? You got to deal with ignorant people. The only difference now is you got to deal with your herpes and you have to deal with you. You were one of those ignorant people that other people with herpes had to deal with. And I say this because when we find out we have herpes, guess what? The only person in the room that knows we have herpes is that doctor telling you got herpes and you. And yet you still feel the stigma. Why? Because you put it on yourself. And then the minute you leave that doctor's office, you look for things that are going to prove you right. So everything wrong or bad that seems wrong and bad about herpes, you place it on your life. You might fear disclosure, not speaking up. You might not date at all because you don't want to deal with what might happen from dating. You know, that you might stop yourself from doing a lot of things and stop yourself from a lot of blessings because you haven't accepted your herpes and you care a lot about what other people have to say about you. But one thing I can tell you about the validation is that no one's opinion is going to pay you pay your bills. No one's opinion is going to give you an orgasm. No one's opinion is going to feed you. So nobody's opinion is valid. It is just words. So ask yourself, why am I rejecting myself? Why am I, I haven't accepted my herpes yet? Why do I rely on validation? Why do I care so much about what other people think about me, feel about me, say about me? Journal it, write it down, be real with yourself. You ain't gotta be real with me, but be real with yourself if you really wanna break down and get to the root of the way you feel. Um, right around this time when I was um, diagnosed, I was in a medical program. And um, I think two months later, I was on my externship working in a doctor's office. And it's just so crazy to me, like not just with um, HSV, but even with HIV, how stigmatized it is. Um, I had a teacher tell us that um, when we would talk about certain viruses and diseases that people have, she was like, okay, but you're talking about HIV, one in every four people have that. So that means if it's 16 of you guys in this class right now, four of you guys can have it. And I was like, that's just so crazy to me because we don't really talk about stuff like that. You know what I mean? Yes, Key. This is what this forum is for. This is why we say that we can't do, like, we are trying to break, we will break the stigma of herpes, but that's just the tip of the iceberg. Like, we're here to break the stigma surrounding every STD, every STI. We're here to, and sometimes in our own community, we'll have people who have herpes and say, well, at least it's not HIV, at least it's not this or it's not that, only fueling the stigma in other areas. And we're not going to stand for that as well, because you're right. It's so common. It's far too common for people to feel like they don't have anybody to talk to about it because there's so many people out here who have it and we should be facilitating this dialogue and Shane and I can't do it on our own. We're here to just show you guys and be examples of what it looks like to live free of the stigma, but also say that the only thing we decided to do is stop giving a fuck about what people think about us and truly do the work. It's never the herpes. It's never the herpes. Herpes is just the catalyst that kind of opens up everything else. I was a hot ass mess before I even got her. Like that's probably what led me to the situation I was in with the dude who I think gave me the herpes. It's because I was out here with no self-love, with no self-worth, out here not having the conversations that mattered the most, out here not trusting or getting to know myself or valuing myself. And that's where that's when herpes entered my life. But since then, all herpes did was shine the light on the dark places so that I could work on those areas and value myself and realize it really only does matter what I think about me. It doesn't even matter what another person on this earth thinks about me as, all, as long as I know I got me. And so that's what herpes, that's the opportunity that herpes could have for each and every one of us if we allow it, if we use it and view it like that and not be scared or afraid and bound by the stigma.
Um, so Keith, thank you so much for adding value. Continue to stand up, continue to support, continue to speak um, unapologetically. And um, thank you for being here. Keith, uh, Kay, hey boo, we see you down there. Welcome to Saturday Storytime. Always a pleasure to have you in the room. Thank you to everyone who's actually listening right now on Facebook Live. Shana got us popping over on Facebook. So if you can't catch us over here, if you're an Android cousin, you can listen to us right now on Facebook. And we're so grateful to have everyone in the community. Uh, Amber, go ahead and introduce yourself, just in case anybody on the Facebook Live is new to us. And then when this goes on our YouTube, um, we know who you are. <laughs> yes, ma'am. I sure got Amber here, aka Watch Amber. I'm the co-founder of the Herpes Can Never Movement. My confidence is contagious. I help women heal on purpose. I've been called to help women feel unashamed, empowered, and worthy, and I'm using my real life experiences to do so. I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a certified life coach, and I'm so grateful to have you here on Storytime Saturdays. Shana? My name is Shana Singleton, aka the Herpes Goddess, Clapback Queen, Goddess Queen Mother. I am the founder of the Herpes Can Never Move It, growing the largest herpes community of over 230,000 because I inspire people to love themselves more. The mission is to make everyone uncomfortable until the herpes community feels comfortable being open about their status and proud of their sexuality. We are so happy to have you all here with us today on Storytime Saturday. I did want to talk to you all about a video I recently did, and the first half hour of our conversation kind of sparked this thought for me. I did a YouTube video that said, fuck disclosure. And it's not in a way that I'm saying that we need to stop. Hold on. My son is over here making all kinds of screaming noise. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> anyway, um, when I say fuck disclosure, I don't mean that we don't have to disclose, but I hate all the responsibility put on us to have to disclose. It's always like, why you didn't tell me? you gave me herpes or down to when Eli was sharing his experience with his girlfriend, you know, it, it was, um, oh, I forgot. I wish Eli didn't leave. Cause I forgot, kind of forgot how Eli broke it down. Do you remember Amber? Um, how he found out that he had it. Not how, how he found out that he had it, but anyway, let's just move. Let's, let's bypass Eli real quick. It is just as much as the person without herpes responsibility to have the sex conversation as it is on us. And even down to the people who have herpes now, we put too much responsibility on the other person that we think gave it to us. We got to stop that. I don't like that. Because at the end of the day, you did not require to see anybody's STI results. If you did not require to see anybody's STI results, and even if you did, because the virus could be dormant in their body, um, we shouldn't blame. We shouldn't play the blame game. And I feel like that's another stress that we put on people living with lifelong viruses that we should put on people living without lifelong viruses. And that will be a part of breaking the stigma down to my fuck disclosure video if you haven't seen it go to my youtube channel it's Shayna singleton and it's literally fuck disclosure um i hate the scary feeling around disclosure the fact that you feel scared the fact that we make this this big ass moment in our lives herpes is a part of me herpes comes with the package having me is a big motherfucking flex i bring a lot to the table to have to worry about whether you gonna walk or not if you found out I have herpes. If herpes make you walk out on me, you are a dumb ass mother. That's how I feel. It's not rejection. It's a turn off. It's a hell of a turn off. How can you Hello. not see? Hello. So Hello. as soon as you can have that attitude around your herpes, and that attitude, when it comes to yourself, Amber, I'm going to put you on mute because your background noise is a lot. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> okay. But when you can come up with the energy, when you don't give a fuck about your herpes anymore, you're going to attract someone that's not going to give a fuck about your herpes anymore. 
There's literally people in my life right now that told me, I don't care if you have herpes, I'll get it if it takes, to, if, if, if that's what it means to be with you. Don't limit yourself to just people with herpes. Don't limit to yourself to just people with herpes or people without herpes. Open the door up for people who have other lifelong STIs too. It's not about sex, y'all. It's about chemistry, connection, spiritual connection, physical connection, that person. What are you looking for in a person? What is a person looking for in you? If a person can walk away because of herpes, they only wanted you for sex to begin with. Amber? Sorry, my background noise is loud. I'm about to be at my final destination. Mm -hmm. um, what she said, if you are looking to any way, take the blame away from everyone else. Make this healing thing, make this self-love thing, make this all about you. It doesn't matter who gave you the virus. It doesn't matter the set of circumstances. Of course, you know, we're not talking about any like violence or any like sex against your will. And that's a whole different category. But I'm talking about for me, who was just like a dude I met on Instagram. We had a little fling. Like I could be mad at him all day long. I could talk shit about him all day long. But the fact of the matter is that's not going to help me at all in my healing. And I made it so personal and I made it so hyper focused around me and all the value that I did have that I wasn't even living in because I was too busy trying to please other people. I was too busy trying to please men. I was too busy trying to please just look like this perfect thing on the outside, but on the inside, it was so hollow. It was so lifeless. There wasn't, I was just existing. I wasn't living because I didn't know life because I didn't know myself. Herpes gave me the opportunity to say, Okay, everything I thought I knew, that's out the window now. Like, life as I know it is over. So what is life now? And instead of allowing it to pull me further away, I, I used it as an opportunity to bring me closer. And even more going back to what Shana said at the beginning of the conversation as far as the, um, the disclosure. Thank you so much. Disclosure is not this huge ordeal that you have to make like this like if you're viewing disclosure as something just so overwhelming if you're not ready to talk to somebody about it and if you're not ready to talk to somebody about it you're not ready to have sex with them and that's the fact of the matter that's I feel like something that Shane and I both say that a lot of people don't want to hear because you, everybody wants to be told it's going to be all right do your thing like no, like this is all about working on you, fixing you. How do you view you? What do you think about yourself? Because that's what's going to, that's what you're going to attract subconsciously, how you really feel about yourself. If you feel broken, if you feel like worthless, if you feel like less than, if your value is gone because of this virus, if that's how you feel internally, that's who you're going to attract, people who want to abuse that in you. But if you feel like having me is the biggest flex of your life, then whoever gets me is a whole, is hit the lottery, that's how I literally really feel about myself. And when you feel like that, herpes is so like, yeah, I have herpes. Like I told, like I told them, uh, I told the man I'm staying at a hotel at the front desk. My friend challenged me. He was like, I'm going to pick somebody and I want you to tell a random person you have herpes. And that's who we decided to pick. And I went up to him and I told him I had herpes. Like when you so sure in yourself, you can look a stranger in the eye and say, Hey, I'm a herpes advocate. I have herpes. Nice to meet you. Have a good night. Because that's where herpes actually is positioned in your life. Now it's not, the overwhelming, your overwhelming reality. It's a part of it that comes with the amazing package that you are. So shout out to everybody in the room. Pamela, Eli's back, Kalina, Key, Rita, Kay, Diamond, hey Queen, hey Leslie, hey Donisha. We're so happy to have you all in the room on Saturday. So it's story time. If you have a story you want to share, raise your hand. We'll go ahead and invite you up to the stage. Um, anything about your diagnosis, about a disclosure story, if you have a question for Shana or myself regarding our herpes um or anything that's involved with that that's what today is for story time saturday so we're so grateful to have you in the room if not we'll just continue this amazing conversation shana queen thank you thank you thank you for putting emphasis on that um if you ain't ready uh if if you fear disclosure you're not ready to disclose again that will be on repeat and that needs to be on a little piece of IG content that we circulate everywhere. Narcissists and manipulators are not attracted to people who love themselves. 
Narcissists and manipulators are not attracted to people who are strong, people who know who they are, people who accept themselves. They don't want you. You will reject those type of people if you accept your herpes and you come to the, to the table with that energy. Rejection will be both ways, whether you love your herpes or you don't love your herpes, they will come. But you have to trust that your spirit is going to attract the people and the things and places, everything in your life that you need. You show up broken, you will attract people who love broken people. You show up whole and strong, you're going to attract people who love people who show up whole and strong. We can tell you all day how to tell somebody you have herpes. Yeah, that's easy. I can teach you all how to disclose your herpes. But that don't still that still don't mean that you're ready. What is he? Why is he screaming? Do y'all hear an eye on the background? Yes, girl. That baby got an imagination on him. I'll be right back, y'all. I'll be right back. <laughs> it's all good. <laughs> That's, um, but that's what Shana said. So thank you guys for being in the room. And so even deeper than herpes, this is about finding yourself, loving yourself, appreciating yourself, valuing yourself. It's so much deeper than the herpes. Herpes can never. It's just, you know, we here, we here to break the stigma. But what it really helped me to realize was herpes was not the reason that I felt like shit about myself I felt like that beforehand I had just been in denial about it I had just been masking it because I had all this male attention because I had this level of success in the military because I had that level of success in my you know in my hometown but in all actuality I didn't even know or appreciate who I really was and I got herpes in 2018 it's 2021 so I was um 35 so I was 33 when I got herpes so a lot maybe older than some younger than some in the community but let me tell you that like what this level of enlightenment that I have now and understanding who I am I'll never be the same and if you're in your 20s early 20s mid 20s wherever you are it you know for my younger folks like this is a great opportunity. It seems like a curse because you got it so young or why now, but it could be the catalyst that helps you, frees you so you can just live more of your life, way more years than I got to live in the version of yourself that's honoring you and choosing you and, and, and making decisions for yourself from a place of love instead of from a place of insecurity and lack. So. Thank you for that, yeah. Amber. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Literally, me and Amber the other day was at PNC Bank opening up our bank account, and our company is called Herpes Could Never. You know how many of us are we had to, we got to keep saying the name, talking to them about it, doing all that. And then here y'all are afraid of a little bit of disclosure. I was on Clubhouse in the airport the other day talking about Herpes Could Never in the middle of the airport, y'all. Look, <laughs> I was on the phone with the bank this morning and they were like, uh, what's your contact email address? I was like, uh, herpes could never at Gmail. And they were like, excuse me, what? Like, hey, uh -huh. herpes. <laughs> herpes spelled H E R P E S. At gmail.com, like, doubt it, doubt it out here. Like, <laughs> listen, and this just goes to show how much the stigma is created by us. I tell everyone that it's the stigma because of the community. You'll have a community of people, 80% of the world, let's get right, saying my life is over. Herpes ruined my life. Herpes is the worst thing that ever happened to me. And yet we expect the 20% to feel a different way. How can they feel a different way when they're looking at it? The majority of people with herpes all sad. They don't want that shit. They don't want to be sad like us. They don't want to be a part of this sad ass community. So how do we change it? We change our narrative. We change the story around people living with herpes. We stop pushing this sad ass story and we start pushing a positive one. Herpes changed my life. Herpes saved my life in Amber's voice. Herpes put me on a path to self-discovery. Herpes showed me all the areas I needed to love myself more in. Herpes showed me all the areas I didn't love myself. Herpes forced me to learn my worth. Herpes 
forced me to learn my body. And now that I learn my body, my orgasms are better. My orgasms are more frequent. I've stopped eating certain food. I don't get stomach aches anymore. It didn't just help me with my herpes. It helped me with every other thing that was going on with me as well. Herpes put me on this healing journey. I'm healing with loved ones. I'm separating those who I thought loved me, who didn't love me. And I'm seeing those who love me the whole time. Herpes has done so many great things for me that I refuse to push the sad story. And I make it my duty to make sure you guys don't have the same, that, that sad story. We got to change it. We got to wake up. We got to open our eyes. Herpes brings shit to the surface. What is your herpes bringing to the surface? Are you ignoring it or are you dealing with it? Amber? That's so great. Are you ignoring it or are you dealing with it? Like, that's a whole word right there. And I love what you said. Like, we are the community. How we feel about it is how others are going to feel about it how do you literally how do we not you how do we literally expect for people to view herpes differently or for the stigma to be broken if we're operating from this place of feeling like we are um i don't know just not seen or feeling less than or unworthy like again herpes saved my life that was the youtube video i made because in my darkest moment, like I was on some homicide stuff. Like I was also, okay, I'm about to catch a charge. It could go either way. I literally don't have necessarily a purpose to live anymore. Like I don't, I was there with it. I don't want you to hear me now and hear this version of me that it's like, oh, she'll never understand or she doesn't understand. No, I was so much so there that I had to figure out there's only way I could only go right or left. And I just chose to do the work. And as I was doing the work, I had like this epiphany, like Shana said, we create the stigma by how, by how we've viewed people with herpes either prior to us having it or just being aware of the fact that the stigma was so strong and did exist prior to us realizing we had herpes. Like, just realize the power in your own mind. Realize the power in your own decisions. Realize the power that if you say the stigma is broken, the stigma doesn't affect your apply to your life, then that's what it will be, regardless of what others think or others do. Or you might be on a chat like I. So I do eyebrows in my city. It went nothing for people to come and lay on my you know bed for me to do their eyebrows, and they'd be like, oh. Girl, she's dirty. She has herpes. Now, this was before they knew I had herpes. They would talk shit about people with herpes all the time. And then I made my YouTube video and the whole daggone world saw it. And they were like, oh, shoot, my bad, Amber. And I'm just like, no, it's all good. You know, like Shana said, it's ignorance. But if I would have just shrunk up and been like, yeah, this or yeah, that. No, y'all, herpes, having herpes is not the end of the world. It's what you make it out to be. And even though I'm technically asymptomatic, and like Shana said, most people are asymptomatic, realizing that the stigma still is very much real for those who aren't even necessarily even having the pain of a physical outbreak um, is it was more even prompting me to be like, oh yeah, we got to do something about this because it's unreal, the power in what you tell yourself. What you tell yourself will be. And so what are you telling yourself? What are you saying about you? Look in the mirror and be honest with yourself. How are you viewing yourself? How are you viewing others? Who are you allowing to show up and be around you? How are you allowing the people in your life to make you feel? What access do you give them? Nobody can even get close to me. Nobody can even get close to me who's not lifting me up, encouraging me, supporting me, speaking life into me, making me feel valued, making me feel worthy. If I have any negative energy around me, like you don't even have the privilege of being in my space and in my energy because who I attract are reflections of who I really am. Listen, mm. listen, you've been saying a whole mouthful over there. <laughs> Girl. Listen, because we can't, this will make this... <laughs> You can't expect somebody to accept you if you don't accept yourself. You can't accept, you can't expect somebody to love you more than you love yourself. You show people how to love you. You show people how to show up for you. You show people how to respect you. And anyone that's ain't with it, they're going to walk away from you. And that's fine. They need to. 
I'm going to say this to y'all all the time. Your mind has to arrive to the destination before your life has the opportunity of catching up. It can be the most far-fetched idea. You can be homeless on the street with not even a book bag to your name right now and tell yourself, I'm going to be a billionaire every single day. Then you end up like Tyler Perry. He was homeless. He's a billionaire. But his mind had to get there first. And that's the same way with this stigma. You have to say, I'm stigma free. You have to say, I'm not dirty. I'm a sexually responsible adult who knows my status and can have clear sexual communication. You have to say, I'm worthy of love. You have to say you love yourself. You have to speak life into yourself. Get your mind there so that your life can catch up. Every single time me and Amber get here on Clubhouse or we're on Zoom, Patreon, wherever we are at talking, we are breaking the stigma for ourselves. We are making sure our lives catch up to that narrative that we set for ourselves in the past. We are still, we're still in the process of of our own healing. Compared to when I started the clubhouse to now, I'm more comfortable. I'm even more comfortable in public. I thought I was, I was already public. I was social media public. Now I'm actually talking to people about it. I'm re, reliving my stories. I'm telling my deepest, darkest secrets, like not disclose it. And I'm doing it with a community of people who have what I have. A community that used to be non-existent because people are too afraid to talk about their herpes. Again, make sure your life arrives to the destination so that your life has an opportunity to catch up. So if you feel like herpes ruined your life, start telling yourself that herpes saved your life so that you can go throughout your days looking for all the things that in ways that herpes has saved your life instead of thinking about all the different things and ways that herpes has ruined your life. It's a mindset switch. Amber? So, so, so grateful for that, Shana. Thank you. I love that. I hope you guys are um, enjoying this. I love this dialogue. I love this. Healing is a lifetime journey. Healing is just the decision to say that you're going to commit to your highest self, your best self, and honoring, giving yourself the best. And I'm glad that you guys are um, on that journey with us, that you found us, you aligned with us. If we attracted you here, then that means that you are ready to do the work. You have everything you need already inside of you to make that happen. Um, Shout out to Pamela. We love you, Queen. Eli, Helena, Kay or excuse me, Key, and then K, Rita, Diamond, Leslie, um, the sexual intellectual, holler at her. She's amazing. She is breaking the stigma with her clothing line. So we want to support our sister and um, so make sure everybody tap in. If you see someone on here, everybody make sure you're following everybody on Clubhouse. Go follow everybody on Instagram. Go follow Herpes Can Never on Instagram and make sure you're part of our private Facebook group. You can get to it from Shana or I's profile. Um, let's see, Donisha, Shan, Tanya, thank you so much for being in the room. We appreciate you. We do this every Saturday and now we're streaming over on Facebook for Android cousins who can't um, get access to Clubhouse just yet. I know that day is probably coming where you can. But just it's time to do the work, y'all. It's time to realize the power that we indeed have. And don't re- don't look at it like herpes took that power. Look at it as herpes gave you the opportunity to take your power back in a way um, that might even surprise you, in a way that's going to, um, not everybody's going to understand, in a way that's going to make you look weird or sound different or be different like my friend said he just something about wanting he said he wanted to be normal I'm like no what is normal normal is a facade I don't want to be normal at all I'm not nothing about me is normal and so you have to have that mindset about yourself if you're bold enough to share something like this with the world ain't nothing about you normal even if the world to you means the people around you and not necessarily out to the level of Shane and our sharing Get comfortable enough in your own skin to where you can disclose and say, I have herpes, like our good friend Beck says, like I say, pass the salt. It should be so conversational. It should be so free flowing out of your mouth that you could just literally say it because it's a matter of fact. So that's where we're working on and helping you all get to. 
Um, it's helped me be more comfortable and more confident as well. I didn't know what was going to happen when I made my YouTube video. But upon that, like it's blown anything, any expectations out of the water. I met Shayna because I stood in my truth, because I shared the fact that I had herpes. You know, I aligned with her because of that. Here's Herpes Can Never, a movement that Shayna was already building. But now look at the magnitude of the movement because we align together and every single one of us, as we align with each other, we just create a stronger and stronger effect and impact on the world. And with that impact, we have the ability to break the stigma. So I'm so grateful for everyone being in the room. It's Storytime Saturdays. Our time is winding up. The hour goes so fast. Shayna. Our time is coming to an end. Do you want to just close out my love? Yes. Okay. And I'll, I'll, and I'll wrap it. Go ahead. It's your girl, Amber. Watch Amber. I just want to thank everyone for their presence um, and for, for participating. For those who came up on the stage and shared, thank you so much. We appreciate you. We can't do this without you. For everyone in the room listening and learning and getting nuggets, we appreciate you as well for being here. Um, I'm just so blessed to do this alongside Shayna, who is just such a queen. And, and uh, I'm just blessed to be in the room with everybody else. You can find me on YouTube and watch Amber. We're on Patreon. So if you're not if you're not one of our Patreons, highly recommend you sign up. We had a crazy conversation last night all about self-care and sex. And so that's what happens um, on our Patreon calls on Friday. So there's so many ways to get in, in touch with us. And we're so just you know, eternally blessed to have you. Love y'all, and I'll catch y'all next time. Oh, and herpes can never, ever, 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 which I'll say that at the end, Sue. <laughs> <laughs> okay, what well, Amber said, herpes can never. But again, if you're feeling sad, worthless, undeserving of love, dirty, um, feeling like you have to lower your standards, feeling like you have to stay in an abusive relationship or a toxic relationship because they know your status. Um, not having sex and not having relationships with people because you have herpes. If, if you just feel lost in your herpes status, I'm here to tell you that is not your herpes. Because I've done the work and I'm living proof and Amber's living proof that herpes could never ever 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 ever, 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 I love ever, you ever. all and enjoy the rest of your weekend. All right, catch you next time.